One of the things I like about this next article, it talks about the paradox of surrender, finding strength and wisdom in the struggle. You know, I remember reading this book, and I don't even know the title of it, but it talked about how, I don't know if it was the Amish, or about how everything was a prayer. They did the dishes as a thanksgiving to God. They, they swept the floor. Who was it? Somebody know what I'm talking about? Was it the Amish or the Quakers? Everything was a gift to God. I, how many times are we like, I gotta do the laundry again? We're complaining because we have a washer dryer that you go and you take it from one and you put it right in the other. I mean, one of my biggest complaints is emptying the dishwasher. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say those words. I mean, I would have lasted in 1719 for maybe five seconds, you know. People would be out there like the women would be having a baby and slugging it on their back and, you know, planting the corn and then harvesting it, and I'd be like, what, no dishwasher? <laughs> we need to have each one of our daily activities, it's our life, it's the only one we're gonna have, so we celebrate it, we, we live with joy. Every time somebody from Pray It Up calls or emails me, it makes me happy, and I say to my husband, isn't it funny that the only emails I ever answer these days are the pray it off people? Because everybody else, I'm like, ah, oh, they can wait. You know, look, pray it off people. I'm like, I gotta answer their <laughs> And But I feel like it, it gives me joy to do something as simple as talk to an email or the phone call. And this article talks about connecting to suffering, sharing in the beauty of suffering without giving yourself up. You come up to me and you say, my mother is really sick, Ellen, she's suffering. As a friend, I can love you, hold your hand, pray with you, go home, pray for you and your mother. Here's what I can't do. I can't go into this abyss of sadness then and say, her mother's sick and the whole world's going to H in a handbasket. That's what I tended to do in the bad past. Some bad things would happen, and I'd spiral down, and then I'd be reaching for the chips and the ice cream. What this article says to do is be present with people's pain and suffering, be loving and kind, but don't let it bring you down. Don't let it take away your joy. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to do what one of my mother's friends does. I call it one of her friends, because she'll say, oh yeah, uh, did you hear such and such died? And the friend will go, uh, really? She, she always laughs. You'll tell her like, yeah, such and such has got cancer. <laughs> really? So then I said, well, to my mother, well, I think that's probably a nervous laugh. I'm trying to get, cut her some slack, you know, a nervous laugh. Because I'm not talking about being joyful from, from someone's pain. I'm talking about being present without letting it bring you down and make you want to eat. I love this poem here. You can read it when you have a chance. It talks about how winning doesn't tempt this person. It's he grows by being defeated by decisively greater things and greater people. What a thought that is, that you don't go through life trying to win, that you take each setback, each problem, and say, well, I overcame that. Sometimes I can get myself on the bed and go, you made it through that, Ellen? Whoa, I'm so proud of you. Sometimes we need to sit back and pat ourselves on the back for what we've suffered through, because God's doing that. And so read this when you get a chance. It's wonderful. It talks about surrendering and, and living life as a living prayer. That a prayer isn't God give me this, God bless this. It's everything we do. We get up, we get dressed, we comb our hair, praise you, Jesus, love you, God. You do the dishes. Everything's a living <coughs> prayer. I love that thought. And if you try to live your life as a living prayer, you're not going to be eating a ton of food because you're gonna be busy praying all the time. Also, letting go of arrogance. You see, I never looked at it as being arrogant. I never said my controlling nature. And when I say controlling, it was more like I wanted everything to be good. I think a lot of women, maybe men too, but I'm speaking from a woman's perspective, they want their kids to be happy. They want this to happen. They, they, they want everything to be good. And, and this letting go, you know, it's, it's hard, but it's liberating too. 
And I think that's what God wants. Not a surrender, not a passive lifestyle, not someone who says, oh, I saw you push that handicapped person there, and God bless you for that. No, you can still stand. So, excuse me, there seems to be a problem here. God, I'm, I need your help. I'm not saying we surrender and we, we become passive, but what we do is we stop worrying about the things we can't control. And that's, so many people come in here, I had a bad week, I had stress, I had this, and that's where you're coming from. It's a long article. And I like this, restoring the capacity to play. Last week I talked about living in the light of Jesus. And isn't that the capacity to play? I don't think you've ever come to a pray it off meeting that I didn't say, try to say something, a, something a little funny, or we have a little yuck or two. Because I think life is so, it's so beautiful, even when there's problems, and we can find that sense of, you know, let's get together and, and let's just, have a couple laughs and just embrace God's beauty on the earth. Good article. And then it says, the challenge that a path of surrender offers is to remain awake without being discouraged by the suffering of others. That's what I talked about. You know, I had someone call me up and say, I've lost two friends in a couple of weeks and I'm really upset with God. I understand that. I understand that. What do I say to that person? Don't be upset, or, or God didn't do this, or, or I could come up with a million different platitudes to say. Instead, I say, you know what? I haven't talked to her, but I thought about what I would say. I'd say, you know what? You were such a good friend. You loved them so much. They meant so much to you. You just say the truth. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? She was a good friend. She loved them so much. I'm just repeating the truth without saying anything bad about God, without trying to control the situation. I would say, I'm glad you're my friend. I'm glad I can leave here today thinking I have a friend like you. That's what I think God wants us to do, to be fully present to someone's pain, to try to bring them up and not be sucked down into the negativity of it. All right, now, the last sentence. And this is a huge, thick article. That's why I said get a cup of coffee and sit there and read it. It's like going to the psychiatrist for 100 bucks for free. The last sentence. It is a disciplined way of being fully, genuinely, and personally present wherever you are, sharing compassion and great kindness with others without giving away yourself. What's interesting about this is the more I gave away of myself, the fatter I got. It didn't go opposite. I kept giving away myself and I kept going like this. And I said, well, you would think that giving away yourself, you'd get real skinny. That's not the way it works because when you give away of yourself over and over again, there's no time for you. There's no time to you know, do the Ellen dance, or to eat healthy, or to, to pay attention to your no own needs. And that, my friend, is what surrender does. It gives us the opportunity to say, I've made mistakes, maybe as recently as five minutes ago. I'm gonna go forward, I'm gonna forgive myself, I'm gonna forgive others, I'm gonna surrender. Let's listen to this song, which, guess what it's called? I Surrender. You all set out?